following is a presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Cougars basketball is on the air. Open in the corner, Spencer Johnson for three, and he knocks it down! Spencer Johnson! This is Cougar Pregame Live, brought to you by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To get you ready for BYU versus Fresno State, here's your host, Cleon Wall. Good evening, BYU basketball fans. Welcome to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Tonight, the BYU Cougars are hosting the Fresno State Bulldogs at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. Almost one year ago was the last time BYU played a game at the home of the Utah Jazz. And oh, what a memorable memorable game that was, just not in a good way. The Cougars hosted South Dakota and came away with a one-point loss. BYU was down 21 with 10 minutes left to go in the game, made a furious comeback. I remember a lot of fouls in that game, lots of missed free throws by South Dakota. But Rudy Williams' potential game winner missed as time expired and BYU lost by one. It was a bad loss at BYU's home away from home. The Cougars shot 35.5% from the field and 21.2% from behind the arc. Woof. But things are a bit different for this current cadre of Cougars. BYU's beating the teams they need to beat and coming out victorious against other good teams like San Diego State, North Carolina State. That's why they're ranked 19th in the nation right now. They're playing much better on defense. Opponents are shooting only 39% from the field and 28% from beyond the three-point line. Meanwhile, the Cougars are making 49% from the field and 39% from behind the arc. And does this this team, they love to shoot the threes. They're averaging 34 attempts a game, making 13 of them. BYU's out-rebounding teams. The numbers are a bit gaudy. I won't go into them right now because they're playing against some teams that they are just bigger than the other team. But one of the guys who's helping out in all of these categories is Savannah, New York's own Noah Waterman. You know, it's funny. The first question I wanted to ask you is actually what we were just talking about. You're kind of a popular guy right now. You were on Sports Nation earlier this week. I'm here talking to you for Cougar Free Game Live for for the radio broadcast. Are you kind of liking all the attention right now? Um, yeah, it's nice, uh, but really I'm just focused on, like, the basketball games, to be honest. Like, publicity, the, the ranking is cool for the team and everything, but, like, we're just really focusing day by day, just trying to get better and shock people. Well, I, I think you've shocked people so far. You're 6-0 and so far in the season. Let, let's compare and contrast the first six games last season to the first game six games this season. This season, 6-0, and ranked 19th in the nation. Last season, 3-3. Three and three. Close losses, close wins in that game. Uh, those three losses, by the way, were, were to San Diego State, good team, USC, good team, Butler, good team. So it's not like you lost to a bunch of chumps out there either. But it felt like you guys were still kind of trying to find yourself last year. What, what do you think has changed this year compared to last year in those first six games? Uh, yeah, well, I think there's like a lot of team chemistry that we built just uh, together on the court and off the court. Uh, and then really just being older. Uh, and trusting each other on the court. Last year, we were really like a second-half team. We would let people get up by like 20 in the first half and then try to work our way to to a comeback. Uh, But this year, we learned that we really just got to punch the person in the face first uh, and get that lead um, right away uh, and then just keep that momentum through the the whole game. What what worse, you you said that you you grew up. You guys grew up. Are, Are there any other instances where it's just like, yeah, I'm seeing growth not only in my game, but also, you know, some of your teammates. Too. Oh, yeah, definitely Trey Stewart. Uh, Trey has been cooking on the court, uh, and we really need him. Uh, but really, everybody on our team, uh, Jax, uh, freaking Dallin, uh, everybody has just grown so much, and we just trust each other a lot more this year. So um, we can really see that on the court this year. What is the identity of this team? Because, again, last year, as I said, it felt like you were kind of searching for it and then you kind of found it as the season went along. What, what do you think the identity of this team is right now? Um, I think our identity is really just defensively oriented. Like, we really just focus on our defense, and we don't worry about our offense too, too much because a lot of times you're not going to be perfect on offense. Uh, so we really like taking our defense and letting that roll over to our offense. So if the other team can't score on us and we're not scoring, like we're still in a good position. So that's what we're really just focusing on. 
Do you, do you see that in yourself too, the defensive side of the ball com- last year compared to this year? Uh, yeah, definitely. Me and Coach talked about it a lot, uh, and he wanted me to be a really good defender and rebounder. And last year I kind of didn't buy in. It was kind of hard for me with, like, the new team, adjusting to everything. Um, but this year I really bought in, and I just know that uh, if I play defense and rebound, then we have a better chance to win, so I'm going to do it. Was there something that kind of switched with you when you're like, yeah, now I'm going to buy in? Um, nah, I think mostly just trusting my teammates and coaches, like I said before. Like, uh, having that trust from them has really just uh, helped me buy into them. Uh, and then during uh, the trip in Italy, that's when I really first saw it. Like, I bought into it when I was there, and I'm like, all right, I'm a rebound and play defense. And we saw us playing great over there, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, let's do it. Speaking of rebounding, you're the team's leading rebounder. Did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I was able to. So now that you know, are you going to be able to go up to Foose and all these other guys and say, hey, I'm the team's leading rebounder, by the way. Yeah, I'm definitely going to rub it in their face a little bit. <laughs> what? When you talk about that, when you talk about rebound, rebounding, a lot of times people just say it's like a mindset. It's just like, I'm hungry, I want to go get the ball. What, what is it that's changed for you where you turned yourself into a, a really good rebounder? Uh, I think it's just going to the glass every time, defensively and offensively. Uh, because if you go to the offensive glass 100% of the time, the whole game, the other team's going to get lazy and not bite you out, like, at least three of the time. So you, that's three offensive rebounds right there. Uh, and then defensive rebounding, just hitting your, your guy first and making sure they're not going to get it. Uh, and we put ourselves in a good situation. Do you feel like you guys, you and the rest of the guys, that there's also kind of like a mental and physical toughness to this team this year compared to last season? 100%. Uh, you could see it in the NC State game. Like, we were down, and we didn't even worry about that at all. Like, we went into halftime. Nobody was, like, focused on us uh, uh, down. For uh, last year, we would kind of shut down and get frustrated with each other. But it's like we have so much trust and belief that we're going to win the game. So uh, we don't let that affect us. What has been your favorite part so far on this young season? I mean, we could go back to the Arizona State game. You scored 24 points in that game. You scored 15 in that NC State game. There's been one game where you didn't score any, but you still got five rebounds. Is there a part of the season, maybe it's a game or a moment or anything like that, where you're like, man, I really, really love that part? Uh, I'm just going to say winning. Like, we just love winning as a team, uh, and the coaching staff loves it. I just, I'm out there to win. It doesn't matter if I score 20 points or zero points. I just want to uh, help our team win in any way I can. Last season, you were in and out of the starting lineup. This season, you have started all six games. Was that an expectation for you to, to start the season, or was that kind of presented to you as you were getting closer to the start of the season? Um, I didn't really know until the first game of the season. For real, I was just going to work as hard as I could to put myself in this position that I'm in right now. Uh, and it doesn't matter, like I said, if I start or not. Like, I just want to help the team in any way I can. Last question here I have for you. Get to play at the Delta Center against Fresno State. Um, BYU gets to do these games every once in a while. Is it kind of nice that you get to play in an NBA arena, that you get to experience what it's like being in an, in an NBA arena in, in, in that type of a venue? Uh, yeah, we played there last year, and I loved it. The rims, I'm telling you, the rims got – soft touches on them so it's like it feels like every shot goes in so uh hopefully that's the case for us uh on friday so let's get it no thank you very much hey thank you noah didn't look like he was fully engaged with this basketball team when he joined them last season but to borrow a term from star wars noah is now fully armed and operational coming up next we'll head to the delta center for our courtside conversation with mark durant Cougar pregame live continues in a moment on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Here's Cleon Wall with more Mountain America Cougar pregame live on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar pregame live presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. It's time for our courtside conversation with Mark Durant. He's at the concourse level of the Delta Center. Mark, how's it been in the home of the Utah Jazz tonight? Man, I love the Delta Center. Feels right to call it the Delta Center uh, again. (laughs) And 
You know what's even more beautiful than uh, the Delta Center watching the Jazz play is the Delta Center with all of the uh, surround uh, lighting and boards have the royal blue and BYU on it. That is that's a beautiful thing to see. So always fun, Cleon, to come up for a game or two. It's fun for the guys. I know I loved playing here. It's fun to play in an NBA arena and uh, kind of get the feel of it. And uh, so this will be good. I'm glad BYU does it. The, the, kind of the northern Salt Lake and uh, nor- uh, north of Salt Lake uh, BYU fans a little closer makes it uh, reasonable to come to. So it's always fun and uh, always great to be here. I will admit when I used to live north of Salt Lake, this was the one game of the year that I look forward to because – it was a lot closer to me, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad they get to play in the, the Delta Center every once in a while. Uh, Mark, what is up with this team? I mean, I was expecting a better team from last season. I was expecting BYU to win at least one game in Las Vegas, but I'm impressed with this team after coming back against North Carolina State without Foose. I'm impressed by their maturity. I'm impressed with their fight. Just maybe not the punches that come along with that fight. You know, I, I, it's good to push people around, maybe not like actually throw something every once in a while. But what's impressed you or made an impression on you when it comes to this BYU basketball team so far this season? Well, Cleon, I'm sure this didn't happen for you, but when I started doing the radio, I get I get, I get people come up to me now and say, "Man, you it was pretty rough first couple of years for you, uh, Mark." But then you got you got a lot better. I'm like, "Well, <laughs> thank you, I guess." Uh, but the point of that story is, I thought I was good, but you know, I, I, who am I to say? But the point of that story, obviously, is you get better the more you do it and, and the more experience you have. Last year you had a couple guys off their mission, Richie and Dallin. You had transfers like Noah you talked to and Jackson and other guys. Uh, you didn't have Trevin Nell. Uh, and, and so they it's not that they played bad. They, they did some really good things. They were in a lot of games. They had Gonzaga and St. Mary's beat at home last-second shots, and they were ahead against those teams on the road late. And so, I mean, they were kind of knocking on the door a little bit. They beat Creighton. They had some good wins, beat Utah. Uh, so it's not like they were terrible last year, but the fact now that they've all played together, you add Trevin in the mix, you add some, add Ali Khalifa and eventually Dawson Baker, you have guys that have played together for over a year, got to go to Europe together, have played over the summer. Uh, it's an experienced team. It's a team that has unity, which is hard to do in college basketball. And, and, and it's a team, like you said, just gotten just gotten better. You just get better the more you play, and all these guys together have gotten better. And now they seem to have uh, a quiet confidence, a little swagger. They play super hard. I mean, you can't fake the offensive rebound numbers. You can't fake rebounding numbers. You can't fake the defense they're playing, guarding the three-point line. Those are hustle, hard, tough stats to, to do well at. BYU's doing well in all of them. And, and I just I just like the way they're playing. And uh, so, I mean, so far, so really good. So far, so really good. But, <laughs> you know, when you have success, Cleon, as you know, you, you're a successful guy. So you start thinking, well, you know, now I'm, I'm a pretty fancy guy and people should, you know, feed me dinner and, you know, <laughs> pick me up and drive me around and stuff. I, I know that's how, you know, you, you kind of fell prey to that. That's but how I roll, you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you have to watch those things. Now you have a whole different set of challenges. Now it was – before people disrespected you a little bit. Now you get all the respect, and uh, you know, now I think, man, I'm a really, we're really good. And other teams will see your ranking and go, boy, I really want to get after BYU. And so there's a whole new set of challenges that come with success, but I like those challenges. I, 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 I'm excited to see how BYU deals with them. My biggest worry right now is who's Traore. I guess, I guess I'm being the concerned Cleon right now, Debbie Downer, whatever you want to call me. Uh, he's day-to-day with hamstring problems. I've had hamstring injuries before. They're no fun. How much does this team change without him on the court? Because they rely on him so much as a low post score. Yeah, hamstrings, it, uh, that's tough because it, it lingers so much and you can tweak it. And He's dealt with it, though, so uh, hopefully it's, it's just a slight aggravation and it's something that he can manage. I don't know that it ever goes away for him. Uh, obviously, you need him. Uh, I mean, he's a real threat inside, such a good player. I, I hate to think about BYU going, you know, into the Big 12 without Fusini. I- I'm not saying he will or won't. Maybe we'll get an update. Uh, Jason talking with Coach Pope right now uh, on his status. But 
maybe you can squeak by some games, especially if Ali Khalifa is able to go. Uh, that really helped. I mean, what a what a surprise blessing that was for the team in Vegas when they lost to Tiki and Foos in that game. It looked really, really dismal for the Cougars, and Ali, Ali came and just played great. So it's not like you don't have any depth there, but you can't replace Foos. I mean, he's just a tremendous, tremendous ball player. And this is going to be something he's going to have to ma- manage, and hopefully it's something he can he can play through and still be really effective. You know, it's interesting. I was trying to think who's the next best low post scorer, and you, you would know by, better than me. I was thinking, is it Spencer Johnson? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know about that. But <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> he, he does pretty good down in the low post, too. Uh, Jackson Robinson is the team's leading scorer, but he's coming off the bench. Does, does he make it into the starting lineup? Th- does it really matter? Who do you take out? I I mean, I think you just keep going with the lineup you have until maybe you see something that's not working. Well, there's a certain pride in being a starter. I mean, I always wanted to be a starter, um, but what I really wanted to be was a finisher. And Jackson's a finisher, and he's had an amazing second half uh, against North Carolina State when BYU needed it. It's not like he's not getting starter minutes. Uh, I think he plays an important role in really being – uh, a spark plug and score. I mean, that bench, that that second five is scoring 40 points a game. That's crazy. That that's leading the country. That that or one of the tops in, top in the country, and he's the, he's the biggest part of that. So, if you you know what, whoever your starters are, BYU kind of just plays everybody, and everybody kind of gets the minutes uh, spread around to them, and that's a huge advantage uh, to be able to play that many guys and have that many weapons and not have a letdown when you sit your starters. So you're not – maybe he's not a starter on this team, but that does not mean a lot. It means a lot on some teams. On this one, it doesn't. Uh, he's going to get the minutes, and he's going to be able to do all the things that BYU needs him to do and, and, and credit him for, for being able to take that role because, like I said, you know, you want to – yeah, I'm a starter. I'm a starter. But, man, what he's done off the bench, uh, I, I don't – I think he's been the most valuable guy. You know, we talk about Noah and stuff, but – Jackson is a guy that really can score anywhere on the floor and is so smooth and such a good defender. It has the quickness. I mean, he he's indispensable for this team. Mark, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm already looking forward to next Saturday's game up at the Huntsman Center against the University of Utah. That would be a trap game. I mean, tonight's game or next Tuesday's game could be a trap game, but I know that this is not a trap game for you. I know you're going to bring 100% effort tonight, Mark. <laughs> good good luck on the call tonight, okay? Listen, I'm going to bring it. I, I got Jason Shepard. You know, he, he he's named Shepard for a reason. He just watches over <laughs> me and takes care of me. Uh, well, hopefully oh, he'll boy. Sh- oh, boy. Yeah, exactly. He'll shepherd you through this night. Guys, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Cleon. See you. Hey, BYU fans, go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. After a quick timeout, we'll look at some of the other scores in college hoops and around the nation. You're listening to Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin BYU Sports Network. With more Mountain America, Cougar Pregame Live, here's Cleon Wall. Welcome back to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We're getting you ready for the BYU Cougars and the Fresno State Bulldogs. Tip-off is at the top of the hour. Uh, College soccer tonight, uh, BYU getting ready to take on Stanford in the College Cup before uh, the match play tonight. The United Soccer Coaches All-America team was announced Brecken Mazingo and Leveni Vaca of BYU were named to the first team. Olivia Wade Katoa was named to the third team. As I said, BYU getting ready to take on Stanford here coming up shortly. In the first match of this evening, one team has already made their way into the championship match. Florida State beats Clemson 2 to nothing. Uh, the BYU women's volleyball team, they're getting ready to host Weber State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. That should tip off, or that should start, I should say, at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, A couple of college football games going on right now. Oregon and Washington in the Pac-12 championship game. Right now it is 0-0. That game uh, just underway. Washington is driving, but it is third down, and they had to call a timeout. In the uh, Conference USA championship game, New Mexico State 
playing against 24th ranked Liberty. That game is tied at 14 with 151 left to go in the first half. College basketball tonight, 6th ranked Houston playing at Xavier. This is part of the Big East Big 12 battle. And right now, Houston has a one-point lead, 51-50 over Xavier, 657 left to go in that game. That is going to do it for Cougar Pregame Live. Coming up next, we'll send you to the Delta Center for the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show with Jason Shepard. You're listening to BYU Basketball on New Skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Zions Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Zions Bank, for 150 years of helping you succeed, Zions Bank is for you. Let's take you courtside and join Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU basketball fans, and welcome inside the Delta Center in downtown Salt Lake City, Utah. This place is the home of the Utah Jazz, but tonight... It's the home of the BYU Cougars as they host the Fresno State Bulldogs. Welcome to December, everybody. My name is Jason Shepard, filling in for Greg Rubel, who is with BYU Women's Soccer at the College Cup in North Carolina. Certainly good luck to the Cougars tonight against Stanford. I'm joined by my broadcast partner, Mark Durant, who has played on this court before, not this exact court, but in this arena before, back in 1994, just just yesterday it seems like, Mark. It does. Uh, BYU has not played since last Friday night when they beat North Carolina State in the title game of the Vegas Showdown. The Cougars begin play tonight at 6-0. They are ranked 19th in the country. It's the first time that BYU has been ranked since December 6th of 2021. That's the good news. The not-so-good news is that the team will be without Fusine Traore, who's listed as day-to-day after leaving the NC State game with a hamstring injury. And, Mark, when I get the opportunity to quote one of the great 80s sitcoms of all time, I'm going to do it. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. Wow. BYU. Mrs. Garrett over here. I'm Mrs. Garrett. You're Tootie. Uh, No, no, I'm I'm Blair. (laughs) Okay. Well, you've got BYU ranked for the first time in two years. You're six and zero, but then you lose Fusene Traore. This is what BYU's dealing with right now. But I can tell you, the confidence has not waned. Well, I, I just, you know, I've been stung so many times. It seems as a BYU fan, I guess all programs deal with it. But I just injury after injury, just when you think you've got everything going your way, you lose one of your best players. Good thing about it is, BYU has a lot of depth, ha- has a lot of weapons. <clears throat> Ali Khalifa, who had been out, is at played last game's warming up now so you have some depth to be able to deal with some of this you don't want to do it long term especially in the big 12 foos has got to be ready for the big 12 he's just too good. what he does is he provides a real scoring threat in the paint and, and that collapses the defense because if you don't double team him he will score at will you cannot stop him with the single the double team comes that opens up your three-point shooters there's a reason byu's getting a lot of open looks from threes and, and making a lot of threes is because Teams can't sell out to guard the three. They have to get back on Foose. So it's going to be tough without him. He needs to get healthy, especially when you talk about the Big 12. Yeah, that's one of the things that I talk about with head coach Mark Pope, and that's coming up next. This is the Zions Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show, and it continues next with Mark Pope on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to hear from BYU head coach Mark Pope as we return to the Zions Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. Here's Jason Shepard. Welcome back to the Delta Center, number 19, BYU hosting Fresno State tonight here in Salt Lake City. It's time to hear from the head coach of the Cougars, Mark Pope. Our pregame chat is brought to you by Zions Bank. For the support you need to power forward, Zions Bank is for you. I asked Coach Pope how he and the team have handled not having a game for an entire week. Well, we took a, you know, uh, we had a light day Saturday and then a really light day Monday and then we'd gone hard Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday trying to uh, prepare for this game. So we got a couple of days to recover from the back-to-back and, and um, I think we've had some chance to dig into some of the things we're doing well and some of the things we need to do better and, and hopefully uh, we've got better over last week. You talked about the fact that Foos is, is officially listed as day-to-day and you just kind of have to take it day-by-day day until you can get him back. What does that mean for you guys? I know um, Ali Khalifa is going to step into the starting lineup. What does that change for you guys out on the floor? 
Well, it's, you know, mostly it's just getting used to something new. So Foose has been a mainstay in our starting lineup for the last two years, actually. So it's been over two years he's been starting for us. And and um, so it's a, it's a you know, it's a significant adjustment. He's been our leading rebounder, our most physical player, and, and he's such a space eater. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's such a comfort place for us. When things get a little scattered, we can throw it into the post to him and trust that he's going to go do good things and it gives a new uh, uh, extra dimension to our offense. So... Those are things we have to find a way to come together as a, as a group and, and make up for, and, and um, I'm confident the guys will do it. Uh, Fresno State comes in having lost two in a row, but I know you know this is a, a good club you're going to face tonight. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good team. You know, they haven't quite found themselves yet. Um, they have unbelievable size up front, and, and their, their bigs play so hard. They're, they're just, uh, they just crush people on the glass. They uh, rim run really hard. Uh, they're great screen and roll guys. They roll really hard uh, to get to the free throw line, so, and, and they rim protect. Um, so, so their bigs are really problematic, and they got three, three, three players in the backcourt that are just elite level shooters. I mean, I think combined, uh, they're starting one, two, and three are shooting 95, 93 percent from the free throw line, which I've actually never seen that stat before. Um, and so, some really skilled scores in the backcourt, and and uh, um, a nice team that's, that's trying to you know find themselves right now, but certainly has a huge upside. And, and so, we got our work cut out for us tonight. Well, I know the guys uh, talking to the media this week said uh, that the last time they were here, they left with a bad taste in their mouth, and uh, them wanting to uh, take care of that is that's a real thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's um, you know, this is um, you know, sometimes you you remember the painful losses forever, and so. Um, you know, our guys are uh, have a ton of motivation. Um, we're not even needing that. Uh, we're just, we're just. I think this group is hungry to keep growing and to, to become the team that we think we can become. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thanks, Jason. All right, that's BYU head coach Mark Pope. It's time now for our keys to the game, brought to you by your local Ford stores. BYU basketball built Ford proud. Mr. Mark Durant, what are your keys to tonight's game? In order for Fresno to to stay in this game, they're going to have to kind of match BYU from the three-point line. That's going to be tough. BYU, the best three-point defensive percentage team in the country. I say if Fresno's six or under from threes, it's going to be a hard night for them. So six or under. And then I'd like to see, we all got a little sloppy with the ball against that pressure from NC State. I'd like to see under 10 turnovers tonight. So those are my two keys. All right, go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show coming your way next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The Cougar Tip-Off Show is also brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic taste of BYU ice cream, now also in a convenient pint. Also brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Let's head live to the All-Pro Capital courtside seats, alongside Mark Durant. Here's Jason Shepard. That's right, coming to you live from the home of the Utah Jazz in downtown Salt Lake City. It's BYU basketball at the Delta Center. The number 19 Cougars taking on the Fresno State Bulldogs. And I mentioned earlier that BYU's ranked for the first time since December of 2021. It's the fourth time in five seasons that BYU has been ranked in general. What an accomplishment for this team this early in the year. Mark... Something like this probably means something to each individual team. For this team in particular, what does being ranked mean to them, do you think? Well, I know when I was a freshman, we were picked at the bottom of the conference, and and that was a motivation for us. We ended up winning the conference that year. And I I think uh, the the way this team was picked at the bottom of the Big 12, nobody really expected a lot from this team. And for them to be ranked this quickly – you don't get that way unless you've played really good basketball and beaten te- good teams and beaten them in a resounding fashion. So clearly BYU is this good. Now you, you've got to be careful. Now it's a whole set of new challenges when you're successful. You're ranked. You start maybe feeling yourself a little bit. You get you get into a trap game like we talked about with the Fresno State. They they know you're ranked. They, this is a big game for them. They want a piece of you. So it's a different mentality now. You've got to really bring it because guys are gunning for you. We'll see how BYU does with that fame and success. 
After the break, my conversation with Fresno State head coach Justin Hudson. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's head back courtside and rejoin Jason Shepard. The Fresno State Bulldogs are a veteran team with several seniors on the roster. They've split their six games, winning three and losing three. They've actually dropped two in a row heading into tonight, falling to UCSB and James Madison. Isaiah Hill is the leading scorer for the Bulldogs, the senior from Bakersfield, averaging 15 points per game. And he's shooting 46% from the floor and 37% from three. And he also never rests, averaging 37 minutes per game. He's the Iron Man. He's the Mark Durant of the Fresno State Bulldogs. Uh, Enoch Bo, and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look at the pronunciation just to make sure I get this one right the first time. Enoch Boachi is the team's leading rebounder for the Bulldogs. Uh, 19, by the way, of his 51 rebounds on the offensive glass. Certainly something to pay attention to tonight. The Bulldogs are coached by Justin Hudson in his sixth season with Fresno State. And I talked with him before tonight's game and asked him, with his team having lost two in a row, how his team has handled that coming into tonight. We want to get better. You know, we got blitzed in the first half against James Madison, and then we played a good game against Santa Barbara, just couldn't make any shots. And uh, so we're excited to play such a good team in a beautiful arena and a good coach and coaching staff. So we're excited right now. It is pretty fun, though. I know in talking with players, being able to play on an NBA court is exciting. I mean, is that part of, of the opportunity here tonight is for these guys to be able to play in an environment like this? Yeah, I think they'll look back on it later. You know, right now, as coaches, you're just worried about the game plan and how well you play. But uh, for the student athletes, I think they'll look back on it later and be appreciated. For your team, what, what is your emphasis coming into tonight? Get better. Compete. Compete with heart, you know, on both ends. And we've been trying to be tough and together, you know, since we started. You know, we got a lot of new guys. We like our talent level, but we got to be tough and together. And what do you make of this BYU team you'll face tonight? Really good. You know, excited to get a chance to play them. I mean, they can really run. They can really shoot it. They play great defense. You know, they're very well coached. They got talent. So we're excited to play them. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. No, the pleasure is mine. Thank you. That was Fresno State head coach Justin Hudson. BYU leads the all-time series mark 13-8. In fact, the last time these two teams played was 2010. The Cougars and Bulldogs have actually played here at the Delta Center, and it was the Delta Center the last time these two teams played here. With BYU beating Fresno State in 1994, there was a certain player in a BYU uniform by the name of Mark Durant that was involved in that game. Any recollections of that matchup against Fresno yeah. State? Yeah, we beat the fighting Brian Santiago's. <laughs> it is a Mark Durant versus <laughs> Brian Santiago rematch, right? Yeah, that, that was a great matchup. That was a great Fresno State team with Brian and Kyle Ray Harris and Mayberry. Uh, th those were some good teams. I don't know if this team is quite there for Fresno, but they're going to come after BYU, like I said. All right, more of the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off show next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Jason Shepard. We're nearing tip-off here in Salt Lake City, number 19, BYU and Fresno State coming to you from the Delta Center, home of the Utah Jazz. And we've been talking about it this week. We've been talking about it on the pregame show so far. Without Fusine Traore in the lineup, the level of difficulty certainly grows. But this team showed a lot beating NC State basically without Foose and Atiki. Now, the good news is Atiki is back, which will help with size. But, Mark, this team has done a great job of playing with what they have. They, Even when they get Foose back, they're still not 100%. Dawson Baker, some other guys still coming back from injuries. Waterman has been fantastic. Nell being back has been huge. Jackson Robinson leads this team in scoring, and he comes off the bench. Khalifa stepping up. He's going to get the start tonight. He was really impressive against NC State. Confidence is a big deal, Mark, and BYU right now has it. Well, that was one of the big questions. How would BYU react in a game like NC State when they were behind, little backs against the wall, a little adversity? And, man, that second half was a thing of beauty. Big part of it was Ali Khalifa. He'll get the start, like you mentioned. 
But this team, I think, is showing in a lot of different ways why they're special and why they're different. But, man, you've got to keep the train rolling, Jason. Well, and I know that there are going to be some people that don't necessarily want to know the score of some other things that are going on right now. But I'm just going to tell you right now, we will be updating you throughout the night on what's going on uh, with uh, BYU women's volleyball and certainly with BYU women's soccer. They are in the Final Four. They are at in Cary, North Carolina, taking on the number two seed, Stanford. And uh, I will give you an update here. If you don't want to hear it, uh, I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Wow, Stanford leading BYU 2-0, and they're in the eighth minute. Uh-huh. Two goals <laughs> in the first eight minutes. This is, uh, this is the game before against North Carolina all over again. Now let's hope it has the same outcome, but this is not the way they wanted to start. I wish I'd turned you down in those three seconds because I don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. The first 10, 15 minutes of these games has just been disaster for BYU. Yeah. Hopefully they'll find a way like they did the other night. All right, time for a final break. We'll wrap up the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off show next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Here's Jason Shepard. It is brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back. Sort of courtside. We're concourse level here at the Delta Center. As number 19, BYU gets ready to face Fresno State. The Cougars have won 11 straight non-conference regular season games. That's the second longest streak in program history in the modern era of NCAA basketball, which, by the way, goes from 1984 to the present. And some of you might be asking, well, if that's the second longest streak in the program's history, what's the longest? Well, I got you covered. BYU won 19 straight non-conference contests from December 5th, 2009 to December 11th, 2011. And, Mark, I alluded to this in my pregame interview with Coach Pope where the guys were talking about the last time they were here on this fee- on this floor, they lost to South Dakota State, and that was not a game that BYU was supposed to lose. They are aware of that. It was a bad taste in their mouth, and that's something they are looking to uh, exercise those demons tonight. Yeah, that, that may have been one of the worst losses I've seen for BYU. They've had such great success in this building prior to that. I mean, they won like 10 in a row or whatever it was, and and they had a chance to win that one, but that was not good. I like how they bounced back and beat Creighton. Following that, that was a big win, but I think we'll see a different team tonight against a, a solid Fresno State team. You're going to have to, like I said, I've said it before, come out with that same intensity you've had, the same aggression on the boards, good defense. BYU should win this. Well, if you want tip-off, we've got it for you next. This has been the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.